Alrighty, so today we're going to be having a look at factorizing quadratic expressions. And in particular, we're going to be looking at three different methods. We've got direct difference of perfect squares, which gets abbreviated to DOPS. Um, and the third method is going to be um, decomposition. So these are the three different basic methods of factorizing quadratic expressions without having to use the quadratic formula. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. So let's just have a look. So when we say factorizing, we essentially mean taking out any common factors between the terms that we have. So if we look at these two terms here, you'll see that the first term has a factor of 3. The second term, having 6, also has a factor of 3. So we could write this with a 3 out the front, because they both have a common factor of 3. But we'd also notice they both have a common factor of x. And the highest power of x they've got in common is x to the 1. So we're going to bring x out the front as well. Now what we put inside the brackets is what gets left behind. So you think about it, 3x times what gives us 3x squared? Well, it's missing an x. So we put an x in. And then we have a look at the second term. Now it's got a minus and we didn't take the minus out, so the minus is going to stay. And the other thing that's going to stay is 2, because 3x times 2 gives us 6x. So that works out. And that is our finished factorized form. And we can check these by simply expanding the brackets and checking we get the same thing when we started. So if I actually go through and expand the brackets, I'd get 3x times x, which is 3x squared. 3x times minus 2 is minus 6x. So you can see I've successfully factorized it. And we can also double check that there are no more common factors. Right? I look at 3x, and inside I've got x minus 2. x doesn't have any common factors with 2, so we're all good to go. Now let's have a look at b. b is another direct factorization. The first thing we probably see is the x that can be brought out the front. They both have a common factor of x. And then we say, oh, well, this one's got a 9, and this one has, well, no number, so that's 1, an implied 1. So we could bring out a factor of 1, but that's never going to do anything. In fact, we could have brought out a factor of 1 between these two terms, but we didn't because there's no point. 1 is not an interesting factor. So the only other thing that I can see in common between them is the minus. And indeed, that's the other thing we're going to take out. So I'm going to take out minus x, which means this is going to be left with just 9 plus x. And we can verify that once again by expanding out the brackets. Minus x times 9 is going to be minus 9x. Minus x times x is going to be minus x squared, which indeed gets us back to the original originally stated um, expression. So that's all fine. I'm going to stop expanding them afterwards. However, I would encourage you, if you're wanting to check your answers before looking at the answers, a really useful thing to do is just expand the brackets yourself and double check that nothing's gone wrong. So the next one is the difference of perfect squares, which is another quick factorization method, similar to the direct. So the thing we need to learn about is about this. What is a plus b times a minus b. What does this equate to? Well, a times a, a times minus b, so we get a squared minus ab. Then we are going to get b times a, b times minus b. So we get b times a is ba or ab and b times minus b is minus b squared. And now, what do you notice? Those two middle terms cancel away. So what are we left with? a squared minus b squared. So what does that really tell us? Well, we never use this to expand brackets. Well, some people do. It's a very useful quick expansion tool. But what we actually do is we actually use it to skip from here back up to the top. Let me show you how it works. Alrighty. So x squared minus 9. Well, x squared minus 9 is really x squared minus 3 squared. Because 9 is a square and x is a square. So this follows this format. 
Therefore, I can substitute it into the top rule. So it's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3, factorized, just like that. So the difference of perfect squares is powerful because it's fast. It's really fast. Let's have a look at a more complex one. We've got 9x squared minus 36. Well, 9x squared is really 3x squared, and 36 is really 6 squared. Alrighty, so that's our A, that's our B. Substitute into our formula, and we're going to get 3x plus 6, 3x minus 6. And we're done. So difference of perfect squares and direct are both meant to be the quicker factorizing methods. And if neither of those two are going to work, we move on to decomposition. Now, decomposition is a very powerful tool. It usually is used in situations where we don't want to use the quadratic formula. So th it works like this. You are trying to find numbers that multiply to A times C, and you're looking for numbers that add to B. What are A, B, and C? A is the coefficient in front of x. B is uh, x squared, sorry. B is the coefficient in front of x, and C is the constant on the end. So in this case, A is 1, and oh, sorry, A times C. A is 1, and C is negative 10. So that's equal to negative 10. B, in this case, is just equal to minus 3. It's the constant in front of here. Alrighty. So now, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3. So let's just take some of the obvious ones. So minus 1 times 10, minus 10 times 1, uh, minus 2 times 5, and minus 5 times 2. And those are all of the, cons uh, the, the factors of 10, and I just need to check them by adding them up. Minus 1 plus 10 is equal to 9. Uh, negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And so the two numbers we were looking for were 5 and 2, negative 5 and 2. So how do we use that? Well, we decompose this middle term by these two numbers. So I'm going to get x squared on the left, minus 10 on the right, and I'm going to split this term into two bits, minus 5x plus 2x. OK? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to directly factorize each pair of terms. Doesn't matter. You just need to pair them off. So in this case, I'm going to factorize x squared minus 5x, and the second pair is 2x minus 10. So common factor between these two is x, so I'm left with x minus 5. Common factor between these two is 2, so I'm left with x minus 5. Hey, look, these two brackets are the same, so I'm going to pull that, those brackets out to the front. And what am I left with? x. Let me do this in blue. What am I left with? x plus 2. And that's the decomposition method in full action. Now, some of you might notice that minus 5 and 2 both end up in our answer. That's true. However, with decomposition, if you've ever got a function in which you're trying to decompose that has a number in front, you will need to decompose the middle term. You cannot skip over that, unfortunately. Anyway, let's have a look at another decomposition. So this one, well, we could go straight in and try, OK, times to AC plus to B, except really there's going to be an issue here, which is that I don't really want to multiply 5 times negative 150. So instead I recognize, hey, look, all three of these terms have a 5 in common. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm just going to factorize it directly. So 5 on the outside, x squared left over, plus x minus uh, 30. Alrighty. So there is my direct factorization. And now 
a is 1, b is 1, and c is negative 30. So 1 times negative 30 is negative 30, and b is just 1. So I'm looking for numbers that will multiply to negative 30 and add to 1. Now, I'm going to just try a few of them. Uh, so negative 1 times 30, well, that's going to be 29. So I don't need to check the opposite of that, negative 30 and 1. Uh, negative 2 and 15, well, that's 13, so that's not going to work. Uh, negative 3 times 10, well, that's 7. We're getting closer, but we need to find a high factor. 30, uh, 4 doesn't go into 30. 5 does go into 30, so negative 5 times 6. Ah, oh, and there we go. There's our 1. So the two numbers that we're going to be decomposing are negative 5 and 6. So we're going to once again split that middle term. The 5 in the brackets are just going to hang out on the outside. x squared stays on the left, minus 30 stays on the right. Split that middle term, minus 5x plus 6x. Now we do the proper decomposition state. Well, now that we've decomposed it, we can do the bit by bit factorizing. So we get x bracket x minus 5 plus 6 bracket x minus 5. And once again, we can see that we've got these x minus 5 common factors with this x plus 6 remainder. So we're going to get 5 brackets x minus 5, bracket x plus 6. And there we go. That is a completely decomposed and factorized um, quadratic. All right, we're going to look at one more. Now, this one doesn't use any, de uh, well, doesn't use any direct apart from the usual parts in the, the steps. And we're going to have a look. So a in this case is 3. So AC is 3 times negative 10. And B is just 13. So two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to 13. Let's have a look at some of the factors. So we've got negative 1 times 30. That's 29. Negative 2 times 15, that's 13. Done. Okay, don't need to go any further. So once again, this is where decomposition really matters. We're going to split that middle term into 2. 3x squared minus 2x plus 15x minus 10. Bit by bit, these two together, these two together. These two just have a common factor of x, so I'm left with 3x minus 2. Two. Uh, these two terms have a common factor of 5, left with uh, 3x minus 2. And you'll know you've done decomposition correctly if you always get this pair of brackets. If that doesn't happen, you've made a mistake either in your selection of what to decompose by, or you've made a mistake in these factorizing steps here. So just always double check that you're doing that correctly, otherwise you are going to run into mistakes. And x plus 5, so x plus 5. And we're done. So that is a lot of factorizing quadratics. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.